Hi, welcome back to my channel. I'm Daniela and today we'll continue with uh, My Hunter. This time the second episode of the first season. In the last episode and the first, we got introduced the characters and the whole general idea of the show that hold on. FBI agent working as a hostage negotiator kind of teacher now um, he's trying to you know, teach some new things but these new things aren't quite well received uh, because you know everything new is kind of scary and we don't need that. But he found Bill. He's also working for FBI. And they together are gonna go across America, I guess, and, you know, try to teach some few things to the police stations there about psychology and serial killers. And um, in exchange, we'll get some informations back as well anyway as usual i got something to drink the episode is ready to start so without further ado let's do this may i help you <laughs> yes thank you i need some replacement electrical tape you bring me the empty and i'll get you a new roll empty what the cardboard core that's left when you run out of tape i can't give you a new one until i get the old are you kidding me no That was the BTK killer, right? Isn't his name like Dennis? How do you pronounce it? Rather? Raider? Rather? It's a really cool intro. I like it. The tape, you know, the serial killers being interviewed. But also mixed with, you know, pictures, crime pictures, photos. Manson is 30 miles away in Vacaville. The hop's giving a jump. You really want to meet Charlie Manson? Why not? Just swing by and say hi. Yeah. Nobody wants to hear about that crazy motherfucker. You know this. Nobody can talk to Manson. Tom Snyder's been trying to interview him for years. For the Federal Bureau of Investigation. What if his civil rights are being violated? Please just get in the car. You can't get to Manson even if you're a fed. If you do go to Bogoville, you definitely need to meet Ed Kemper. What happened that may have killed a bunch of co-eds right here in Santa Cruz? Six teenage girls who chops their heads right off. He has sexual intercourse with the corpses. Kills his mom with a claw hammer. Has sexual intercourse with her head. He wanted to be CHP, but it didn't work out. You would joke that it would be concealed his psychiatric record, but not his fat ass. And this is before you knew about the killings. Oh, we knew about him. I just started connecting him with him. I was asking about them, though. You didn't suspect him? Let's just say he was a friendly nuisance. It was hard not to like. In the end, he lit out to Pueblo, Colorado, expecting there to be some kind of man on it. When nobody came, he got sick of waiting, decided to turn himself in. We thought he was bullshitting. Who would he stop yakking? Going into forensic detail. If you're going to go in, you need to go in stone goddamn cold, take him by surprise, get the fuck out as quick as possible. Good advice. Straight in there. Don't phone. Don't give him a chance to ask around. I wouldn't mention the killings. You're not there because he's a necrophile degenerate. You're there because he's fascinating. How do I not mention the killings? Holden, they're not going to let you in with a sidearm. The guy is six foot nine, weighs 300 pounds. That's right. So what's he going to do? He's going to take the fucking thing away from you. He's going to kill you with it. And then he's going to have sex with your face. You're going to be sorry. No, you're going to be sorry, Holden, when he decides you're using him and there's nothing in it for good old Ed. I think there is. What? He's going to be a part of something instead of rotting inside a cell. Whoa. That's good. They chose a nice actor. Holden, right? Edward. Edmund. Edmund was my mom's idea, so you can call me Ed. I'm an instructor. 
working out of the behavioral science unit at Quantico, and I have this idea. Have you had breakfast? Can I get you something? You want a sandwich? No, I'm okay. Well, what kind of sandwich you like? I'm good. You want an egg salad sandwich? I'm, I'm fine, really. I'll get us an egg salad sandwich. I can get almost anything you want from the canteen. I applied to California Highway Patrol. My mom spoke to the cops to get my psychiatric record expunged. It turns out my record didn't bother them at all. I was just too tall. What? Nothing. It just seems... Do you think they lied to me? No. Well, so for example, with cops, I would not allow myself to walk into a trap because I knew exactly how their minds work from watching Wombok. The classic is talking too much about the crimes over interest. You have to remain casual. People who hunt other people for a vocation, all we want to talk about is what it's like. Shit that went down, entire fucked upness of it. Physically and mentally, I don't think people realize you need to vent. What are you writing down? Oh, I just think it's an interesting choice of words. Vocation. Well, what would you call it? A hobby? I'd say it's more than that. Look at the consequences. The stakes are very high. Do you believe that prison can help you? Are you kidding? Do you think you shouldn't be in prison? I think it's shutting the barn door after the horse is bolted somewhat. What do you think the state should do with you instead? Well, hold it. A lobotomy's not out of the question. You don't think you could benefit from psychiatry? I already did all that in the institution. It didn't take. For me, I think surgery might give me the best chance. And if surgery doesn't take... Death by torture? You keep looking at me like I'm a specimen. Well, to be honest, mm -hmm. it's just, you seem like a nice, ordinary... It's difficult for me to square you with what you're in prison for. Well, sure. People expect I them was to a regular look guy. scary and... Most of my life was a nice home, nice suburb. Know what to be afraid of, but... Uh, usually they look like normal At guys. At the same time, <laughs> I people. was living a vile, depraved, entirely parallel of Filled with debased violence and mayhem and fear and death. You know, there's a lot more like me. People that kill in sequence like you did. Sequence? Well, night after night. At regular intervals, I've just been calling them sequence killers. I'd say right now, North America, more than 35. 35? But you're never going to find them if they don't want you to. Not even close. That can't be right. I'm just an extremely accomplished murderer who spent my adult life successfully evading capture until I gave myself up because I despaired of ever being caught. He's not some frenzied thrill killer, Bill. I think we need to face that. So articulate. He's meticulous and highly intelligent. He's self-aware and objective. Isn't that highly unusual? He's saying everything you want to hear, just like he did with the shrinks in the institution. He knew just enough to talk his way out, then he went hunting. You feel this? Feel it, it's all muscle, cartilaginous. <laughs> your, uh, your mom was on campus at UCSC, right? That's all she lived for, man, her work and her precious co-eds, and she mothered relentlessly. Do you think that she neglected you for that? She had a very violently outspoken position on men. She had a failed marriage with my father. I looked a lot like him, so. You reminded her of him. As far as she was concerned, I was never going to end up with one of those girls because I was a fuck up and an embarrassment. My mother was a decent, upstanding, reasonable woman, but when it came to me, she had nothing but contempt, disappointment, and disdain. Did your mother humiliate you? And he was conditioned to do it. Did he say that? As good as. It's shtick. He's telling you what he's guessed you want to hear. But why would I want to hear that? Because you're you. There's no doubt whatever happened in there was a profound experience for you. But I need you to understand that whatever you think, there's a distinct possibility that he's manipulating you. Her name's Rosemary Gonzalez. 73 years old. Her husband died of cancer, so she sold the family farm in Chico, moved to Sacramento to be closer to the grandkids. Two weeks ago, we find her beaten within an inch of her life in the doorway to her back porch. And... The little dog's throat's been cut. 
Was the dog killed because it was protecting her? Or for some other reason. She was hovering in and out of a coma for the past 10 days. Now she's finally come around. She has no recollection whatsoever. We need to know exactly how worried we need to be. Who would do such a thing? I never hurt a soul. I don't have any enemies. I don't dress like a whore. I'm an old lady. Did your dog ever bite anyone? Never. Ever bother anyone by barking? Any complaints from neighbors? No. He was very well behaved. Who helps you take care of the yard? I have all sorts of help. Kids, mostly. Which kids? Just local kids. And you didn't recognize your assailant? He wasn't familiar? I do remember a smell. He stank. Like what? Like a bum. Like somebody who needed to wash. 17, 18-year-old <laughs> high school kid. Low self-esteem. Hates authority. Doesn't get along well with his parents. Gets into a fight with his old man one night. Maybe gets a hold of a bottle of liquor and... Comes across the house, recognizes the place because he used to cut the grass there when he was younger. She doesn't recognize him, thinks that he's broken in, and she starts yelling at him. The fight gets physical. He beats the shit out of her. He knifes the dog because the dog is yapping its head off. You see, Bill, even as a child, I had kind of a rich fantasy life. As a teenager, I began by cutting up inanimate objects, G.I. Joe, my sister's dolls, ripping their heads off, cutting up the bodies, and my mother yelled and scream at me, tell me I was sick. She thought I was going to do something hideous one day. This is when I was 10 years old. She'd make me sleep on a dirty old mattress in the basement, lock the door, 10 years old. So then it became dogs and cats, strangling them, burying them in the backyard, just to vent. In the end, I ran away to live with my father, but he didn't want me either. They packed me off to live with my grandma. She thought I was a freak. Is that why you shot her? Well, they were both very controlling, aggressive, matriarchal women. I was put in a fucking mental institution. I was 15. I was 21 years old when I came out. Physically, I wasn't impotent, but emotionally I was. Because of the way I was conditioned by mom, I knew a week before she died I was going to kill her. And I cut her head off and I humiliated her. A woman humiliates her little boy, he will become hostile and violent and debate. Period. Some DA called me and asked why I had two agents in Sacramento, two goons. <laughs> his exact word. It's a strange case. Bill, for the past three years, all I've heard you do is complain about how overworked you are with the road school. I gave you your assistant, and this is how you choose to spend your time? I trust you understand my position on this. Tom doesn't care what kind of music you like, what kind of job you have, what kind of car you drive. Instead, She'll ask you about your mother. If she thinks you love and respect your mom, she'll know that you'll treat her daughter the same way. Do you like your mom? I do. She's someone I really enjoy talking to. I knew it. I knew you were mama's boy. Are you out of your fucking mind? You interviewed Edmund Kemper. Not so much interviewed, more like a conversation. He said a bunch of extremely interesting things that turned out to be really useful. It is not our job to commiserate with these people. It is our job to electrocute them. How long has this been going on? Just when we're in Sacramento. Mm -hmm. Conversations with Kemper shed light on things we've been exploring in the behavioral sciences. There's a clear correlation with what we're finding at crime scenes. It proves that we're on track. I truly believe there is a vein here that needs to be mined. Okay, you know. You're looking down the barrel. Three whole bags, censure, suspension, transfer. California jails are full of thrill killers and lust murderers. And we put them there. That's our job. Dying and rotting on the vine. Cry me a river holding all the wasted potential. It is wasted potential, sir. How do we get ahead of crazy if we don't know how crazy thinks? I like you, Bill. I don't particularly like him, but I like you. OK, you may continue with your little sideshow. However, no one can know about it. Clear? You will relocate yourselves to the basement beneath behavioral sciences, reporting directly and exclusively to me. So, that was a thing. That was the second episode of My Hunter and is getting even more interesting. Um, the episode started with a guy named Dennis. And I'm pretty sure, because it also kind of looked like him, is the BTK killer. So I think he's going to be left like for the end of the season or something, because in each episode, it's not that 
um, they show more of him, just parts, bits here, there, the uh, end of the last episode, in this episode, in the beginning, but also in this episode, um, Holden and Bill are doing, or were doing the tour of not every police station, but like most important one around America. Um, and they ended up in Sacramento, where they, the police there, the department there, have a kind of a weird case, a bit unusual, of an elderly woman being, you know, beaten, assaulted, but her dog was also killed. And even if in the beginning Bill didn't seem that eager to help out, Holden um, convinced him and they talked with the, the chief there at FBI and uh, they are going to unnecessarily investigate, sure also investigate, but you know, lend a hand, a helping hand. Um, Holden already had kind of a theory about who might have been, maybe a teenager, uh, someone from the neighborhood that knew the knew the lady and you know was um, he did it because he was drunk and the dog was annoying and all that. But I don't know, I don't know what to say. It could be choosing someone that is. A, an easy target uh, but he couldn't just go through with it so he decided to you know um, spill his anger on the dog because it was like a small dog and all that hmm, I don't know. but also they met because Holden wanted to meet Charles Manson and that couldn't be done. Uh, he met with Ed Kemper, the infamous serial killer, um, and they had an interesting talk. Uh, Holden was surprised to see this uh, normal looking guy, even if he was tall, but you know, looked like a normal human being, quite intelligent, quite articulate, and I think as most of people, when you think of a serial killer, you expect someone to look like a monster, you know, in most of cases, serial killers look normal, some of them are quite, you know, charming, if you, you know, don't look at the serial killer part, but you know, just by the looks. But you know, a lot of people describe these serial killers after they see them. You know. Oh, he looks so normal and so charming and you know, so nice. And that's why they are <laughs> dangerous, frightening, because it could be anyone. But yeah, um, hold on, and Ed had started their conversation about, you know, um, Ed's childhood and maybe what made him take at, um, as I said, you know, I think he was, you know, born with a certain disposition, let's say, and um, no one seemed like it took care of him. Um, when he needed in his childhood, uh, apparently, you know, as most of serial killers started small and then just escalated, he started with toys and then, of course, animals and then, you know, the real thing. It seemed like he 
had a, a real hatred for his mother. Because apparently, it seemed like this episode, you know, centered more about around, you know, the mother figure with Ed and then Holden and uh, his girlfriend that I don't remember her name, you know, talking about mothers, 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 how you get along with your mother. Um, but going back to Ed, it did seem like he was resenting her and he was kind of scared of her and angry with her because of the way uh, she was treating him. And even if he was, you know, um, sent to this kind of a hospital but for like mentally ill after he got out of there um, he you know continued to do his thing I was there I, I'm guessing when he was a teen he didn't got the help that he needed I'm not saying that it could have changed everything but you know it was at least a try to if anyone would have noticed how he was acting and one what he was doing when he was a child um, and you know took the proper measures maybe maybe things would have had been different not you know I'm not trying to find him excuses or um, blame it on on his childhood but you know there might be a reason i think you have to take care of the problem from the beginning before you know it escalates and when it's too late to do something because you know apparently he went to psychiatrist and all that and it didn't work and it didn't work because he already had that mentality was too kind of old change something I'm not saying like for him as you know a person that again I do feel that he was born with I think I think he was diagnosed with um, schizophrenia or something like that and he was also kind of you know pretty smart in a way he, I don't know, I don't remember exactly, but I know that he ha has, because I don't think he's dead, pretty high IQ. So at a certain age, he knew how to kind of manipulate the uh, authorities and, you know, keep uh, himself free until the moment he, you know, just gave up and uh, no it also seemed like he's not um so it's not in this illusion that he's not doing anything wrong or he didn't do anything wrong he knows what he did and that he has to pay for it At the same time, he also likes the, not necessarily the publicity, but people to know about him, the notoriety, kind of. It was an, an interesting episode. I liked it. <sighs> but uh, I think this is all I have to say about this episode. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy. I'll see you next time. Bye.